White House spokesman Robert Gibbs minced no words about the cover story in Forbes magazine this week. It was, he told me, a new low for journalism. Conservative author Dinesh D'Souza writes that President Obama has adopted an anti-colonial worldview from his Kenyan father, Barack Obama Sr., who, by the way, left the family when his son was two years old. The article says of the president, he adopted his father's position that capitalism and free markets are code words for economic plunder. He must work to wring the neo-colonialism out of America and the West. Clearly, the anti-colonial ideology of Barack Obama Sr. goes a long way to explain the actions and policies of his son in the Oval Office. The invisible father provides the inspiration. The piece was embraced by, embraced by House Speaker turned uh, Fox News commentator Newt Gingrich. A stunning insight to say, what if he is so outside our comprehension that only if you understand Kenyan anti-colonial behavior can you begin to piece together and that that's the most accurate predictive model for his behavior. But some conservatives were appalled by the Forbes piece. And it also sends a message, and I say this as, as a Republican, there are a lot of other people who are the descendant of African traditions. Are they not welcome in our party? Do we not think they are real Americans? Liberals, meanwhile, focus their fire on Newt. Newt Gingrich, I think, has hit a new low, playing to the birther fringe of the Republican Party, accusing the President of the United States of having a Kenyan worldview. Deborah yeah, Saunders, you wrote this week that the media uh, and others are taking Newt Gingrich's pronouncements way too seriously. But he's not just some talk show blowhard, he's a former Speaker of the House. He's also a walking blurb. I mean, everything is the most astounding revelation. And he's just, he's, and, and if anything is trendy and it has a, it has a lot of polysyllabic words in it, he's going to jump on that surfboard. <laughs> so, of course, he said something like that. I mean, he's asked about Dinesh D'Souza and he, and he did the most insightful revelation. And he, and, but it's, it was just <laughs> silly. It, and I think the White House was right about the Dinesh D'Souza piece. It was, it was uh, I don't like psychoanalyzing the president. I think that there are better things that we have to do as journalists. I think it was, this was psychobabble, it wasn't even psychoanalysis. Dinesh D'Souza, it's like he, you know the stripper song, you gotta have a gimmick? Well his gimmick is, hey, I grew up in Mumbai and Obama spent time in Indonesia as a kid, so I have this unique understanding to how he sees the world, and he came up with this just silly construct. Right. D'Souza, just, and, and as you pointed out, Howie, there were mistakes in it too. And we'll get to those in a moment. D'Souza did tell me this was a psychological theory that he had devised. Uh, John Avalon, what do you make of his whole argument that Obama is adopting these anti-colonial policies and believes in the white man's oppression because of his dad? Oh, look, I don't believe, and I, I think it's Americans in general, we don't believe that, forget that the individual separate from the sins of the father, that somehow that a belief system is passed on through osmosis from the father to the son, especially when they last met when they were 10 years old. <laughs> look, we've seen psychological, these sinister psychological profiles of presidents that began to, actually when Woodrow Wilson, we saw a lot during Nixon, uh, Clinton, George W. Bush, they're always hyper-partisan and hyper-paranoid, but rarely do they leap to the cover of a respected national magazine like Forbes, and that's part of what's troubling here. It's a sign of the rise of the partisan media. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and the, the Columbia Journalism Review, I think, was right to call this smear journalism. Let me pick that point up with Craig Crawford. Robert Gibbs really went after Forbes for publishing this. Uh, he told me that there was no fact checking, that some facts were left on the cutting room floor. Now, obviously, Steve Forbes, the editor in chief, was a Republican presidential candidate. What do you make of the magazine's decision to put this thing on the cover? I think it was not only a cover story, but cover uh, for politicians like Gingrich to connect to this birther movement, even though this the article does not assert that he was born anywhere but Hawaii uh, because uh, I think a lot of politicians like Gingrich are looking to do that and then that's what this this accomplished uh, this author in, in particular in the past has been uh, a foundation uh, for these kinds of things he wrote a whole book claiming that cultural icons American icons like Britney Spears caused 9-11 by uh, uh, by uh, outraging Islamic uh, values uh, Offending Islamic values. I've never heard those two words in the same sentence. I know, Britney Spears, and, and, and a lot of politicians like Pat Robertson went on to say, yeah, it's the godless American cultural leaders who caused 9 11. You know, and, and, that was, and, that, and that's what this author accomplished in that case. Kinesh D'Souza told me he explicitly rejects the whole birther movement, and he says he drew a lot of this from Obama's own memoir, Dreams from My Father. Let me read another quote, and I'll toss it back to you, Deborah. Uh, Here is a man, the article says, who spent his formative years, the first 17 years of his life, off the 
the American mainland in Hawaii, Indonesia, and Pakistan with multiple subsequent journeys to Africa. Uh, well, Hawaii may be off the American mainland. And by the way, he only visited uh, Pakistan once as a college student. So your thoughts on that briefly. Well, yeah, that, that was a real problem in that piece because I do consider Hawaii part of the United States, whether it's part of the mainland or not. And uh, he did spend some time in Indonesia. It, I read the book, and one of the I think that he, he talked about when he went to Indonesia sort of becoming more might is right in, in, in his thinking when he was a kid there. So I, I just don't know where, that, where the, these ideas come from. The article this, this is a mystery to me. The whole, that Forbes printed this and gave it that, it's a mystery. Okay. I gotta go. By the way, uh, the article <laughs> says that uh, blames Obama for an export-import bank loan to uh, Brazil, uh, which in fact was done by a, a commission that had no Obama pointers on it at the time. That was just one example uh, that people pointed to. John Avalon, Deborah Saunders, Craig Crawford, thanks very much for joining us this morning.